boys and ladies, and welcome back to Bear With Me. I'm your host, Shade Renard. And last episode, we got uh, our friend Ted, who's like a private detective, uh, to join us. So, we're going to talk with Millie really quick, just because Ted's with us now. See if that changes anything. Oh, so nice to see you two working together again. True friendship is never... Okay, forget it. I'm going back to the office. <laughs> Mr. Bear, I know you wouldn't let Little Miss wander around alone. Now, would you? Why? Is your exaggeration after her? Listen here, Mr. Bear. Little Miss needs your help. Her brother is missing. Now, you clean yourself up, get your head straight, and help her out, or else. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Bear. Sure, gang up on me. Anyways, we should get going. I don't have all night. I like Millie. She doesn't take any shit. <laughs> Alright, let's get going then. Let's head out. Watch my back, Ted. There's some chain thingies inside. Okay. I could do something with the case. Locked. Hmm. Maybe I can use the Swiss Army knife. I don't think so. No. no. Never mind then. Um. Plantae regularis, a common plant found in most households, I guess. Okay, if you say so. The use of the colored green is what makes this painting stand out. It's just so vivid and beautiful. You can almost taste it. Yeah? Okay. It'd be nice if I could see something other than gray. Oh, well, there's an attic door. A door that leads to the attic. No, really. That's all there is to it. It leads to the attic. Hence the name, the attic door. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Unpack stuff from our city apartment. Let's guess what's inside. I bet it's full of bouncing balls, sorted and packed neatly according to color, size, or bounceability. You are reminding me of, like, why that sparkle from my money. I bet it's full of diamonds. That's something one would have lying around in a cardboard box in the middle of the hallway, right? Sure. Pardon? It's a ham, bacon, lettuce, and mozzarella cheese sandwich on pimento bread. It's mounted on my wall, and it shines. So it's like a sandwich that's also kind of a lamp. What? She has way over her active imagination. But hey, I mean, that's not bad, I guess. Whatever. A lamp. Nothing else to it. It shines. I can see where I'm going. But if I can see where I'm going, that means I'll hardly ever get lost. So this lamp is like a beacon reminding me that wherever I am, I can just look around and I'll find my way back home. I mean, I like your perspective, but... Not necessary. The accentuated, almost reckless brush strokes could be an indication of the artist's lack of formal education. Rather than paint with methodical, almost sterile precision, he instead attempts to convey his inner turmoil through his paintings, making his work better appreciated through sheer emotion. What the hell are you talking about? You're just such a caveman. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Ted. Right there with you. It's a fishing village, somewhere on the coast of Norway, probably. I'm so glad I got dragged out in the middle of the night to look at the paintings hanging in your house. What else am I going to do, right? Ted, officially my favorite character. Like, she's eccentric and all, but like... I feel Ted's personality on like a personal level. It's so dark in here, Ted. I can't see anything. The light is busted. We'll have to find a flashlight or something. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's just... It's just weird. Yep, it's weird. Okay. We're gonna go in the Flint's room now. Wait, it's locked. But why? This is mighty suspicious, doll. Wasn't there a hole in the study wall? You know, that one that you used to crawl through when you were younger. You're right, Snoop. Maybe I can still fit through. It's 
worth checking out. Okay. We can't get to the attic door, so let's just continue on to the hallway. I really love the art style of this game. It's really pretty. What the fuck are you? Rust. Weird robot man. Hey there, Rust. It's been a while. Sure has, Snoop. Still walking the beat? Not lately. I finally took some time out to sort things out. He's pretending he's retired. It takes a lot out of him, apparently. Well, you couldn't have picked a worse time to retire, Snoop. Things are getting close to boiling point down in the city. What's going on, Rust? Wish I could tell you, Bear. I'm as clueless as the rest of them. One thing I know is that I was working at the steel mill one day. The damn place got blown up. Hmm. You know anything about a red man? We've heard rumors about some red man. Know anything about that? I sure do. He's the damn reason all this is happening, Bear. So this red shows up down in PC. This was a week ago. He goes up to the thugs first, gathers information and such. No one thought nothing of it. A couple of beaten up low lives here and there. It's a common trade with these guys, you know? Then, the fire started. We hear a couple of guys down from the coal district gathered a posse, try to corner this bird. No one heard from him since. <laughs> and those guys are miners, Bear. They're as tough as nails. Who is? Those guys, Ted. What kind of information is he after? Well, here's the funny part, Snoop. I heard he was asking a lot of questions about our beloved miss here. That's why I'm here. Interesting. After doors and the kids left the city, I figure I'd come here and make sure Amber stays safe. Now, don't you be dragging her on one of your ill-advised adventures, Bear. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Anyways, why would this guy be going around asking about her? You know anything about this, doll? Anyone whose life you're messing with? Besides mine, I mean. Angry boyfriend, perhaps? Don't get smart. I never heard of this red guy until tonight. Besides, you're the only man in my life, Bear. Who's getting smart now? <laughs> so, what kind of information is this guy after, Rust? Haven't I told you about this already? He's asking about our little miss here. Is he alright? He's fine. He's just sleepy and grumpy. And, like, totally not drunk. Nah, I'm fine. I'm just sleepy and grumpy because she dragged me out in the middle of the night on some wild goose chase. Nice to see you two are getting along after all these years. <laughs> I love that. Sleepy and grumpy, that's that's definitely me all the time. <laughs> We've heard the city is in lockdown. Sure is. Been like that since the mill exploded. The official huh. statement is that there was a gas huh. leak down at the basement level. We all know better. Okay. I think someone's trying to cover this thing you up. You think it wasn't an accident? You think someone is trying to cover something up? I wouldn't go that far, miss. My suspicion is that the officials don't want to make a big deal out of it. Keep the folks at ease. What about the mill owner? That Maybe not. Oh my god, really? Deeds fellow. He made any enemies lately? Filed any big insurance claim or something? Nah, Bear. Mr. Deeds is a straight-up bird. Besides, his son was down at the mill when it happened. He had got a little ear buzz, is all. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna check it that I'm still recording after that. Yeah, looks like we're good. Alright. So no one leaves or enters the city at this point? So no one leaves or enters the city at this point? That's what the lockdown implies, Bear. Folks are still escaping, though. I hear That's some good. of them got here through the tunnels. Them mugshot boys were the first to flee, and poor old Millie. I hear she got here safe. Yeah, she's Millie's fine. in my room. She's resting. Bless your kind heart, little miss. I'll stay here in the hallway. Keep an eye out. Can you do it, Rust? You seem kind of tired. I ain't no bunny, little miss. Some buster tries to pull a fast one on me, I'll give him a little chin music before I drop a dime on him to the elbows. <laughs> um, what? He's saying he can do it. <laughs> uh, uh, that street for he'll beat his ass. <laughs> Whoever it is. Ah, that's great. I really like Rust. He's a cool character. How'd you escape? I used the East Tunnel maintenance shaft, but the thing was getting close to collapsing. I think they closed it off completely after I got through. Hmm. 
Have you seen Flint, Rusty? Millie told me he might be missing. I'm sorry, little miss. I'm afraid I haven't seen your brother. But I'm sure he's fine. Flint is a tough kid. Besides, no one has left or entered this room since I got here. Okay. Know anything about the Yellow King? You know anything about the Yellow King? No, really. I guess Heard they about left that the yet. thing wide open, like open to interpretation. I personally didn't think much of it. Well, we better get cracking. Catch you later, Rust. Sure thing, Snoop. Thank you, Rusty. Bye. Bye, little miss. Don't worry about your brother. I'm sure he's all right. Voice acting in this game is really good. I really like it. Now, I don't know what Yellow King is. If you guys know what they're talking about with that, put it in the comments below, because I literally didn't catch any of that or what the hell that means, so. I see three anthropomorphic mailboxes dancing to the captivating beats of the J. Summers Jazz Quartet. What? All right, whatever. A painting, or is it? I mean, generally, a painting on the wall is a painting, so. A painting, or... Well, you don't read too much into it. It's a tree. Like the ones outside, only this one is inside. It's and dead. creepy. I don't like it. It's definitely dead, too. Parents' room, study. Let's go to the parents' room. Looks like she walked to the wall there for a there second. There should be a key around here somewhere, unless someone took it. Let's study then. We're back. Let's see. The statue? It's Anubis, protector of the deceased. It's so common you would think people have an almost unnatural fascination with death. I mean, I'm not gonna lie that I kinda do. All like goth and the morbid and dark shit, so yeah. I'm really interested in the Egyptian gods so much. I mean they're cool and like Egyptian mythology is neat, but like, I was never really into it. Something with this? Oh. No. Ah. There's a number written underneath. 107. What does it mean? 10 sevens, the police code for an unconscious or a dead person. That's a little grim. I don't make the rules. I sure as hell don't follow them either. I really love Ted. Guys, comment down below if the 107 is an actual police code for that, because that's interesting and I didn't know that before. That's the truth. It's growing from the sand. Aren't you perceptive, doll? You should have been a detective. And you should have been a 10 year old girl, because you throw like one. <laughs> My grandpa's books. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but these look so bored. Maybe once you grow up a little bit, uh, that'll change. Just shining away. I have a similar one in my room. You have the same lamp in your room. It's just asset reuse. Those lazy artists. <laughs> That's a fourth wall joke about, uh, about game developers, because literally this is the same lamp, and it's an uh, in-game asset, so it's funny. Please, whoever finds this log, I'm one of the developers, will bear with me. I I didn't want to do it. They've made me. What? Please send some... Oh no, I can hear him coming. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that's just disturbing. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, with that, I'm just going to start clicking on everything now. Because, like, normally in point and clicks, like, there's a lot of stuff that you can just, like, ignore. That's really not important. Like, there will be, like, a little bit of exposition, but there won't be, like, any real purpose to it. That makes me feel like there's purpose to everything. Highly breakable. Believe me, I know. Nothing interesting about it. Okay. This chair is so comfortable, but we don't have time to sit around. Well, Ted will probably need to at some point. He's getting old. Huh? 
Ah, I wasn't listening. You just ramble on and on sometimes. You didn't hear me because you're old. Or he just tunes you out because he just doesn't want to listen to your shit. Ah. I've actually known people like that that just talk and talk and talk and then you just eventually start tuning them out and then when they actually catch something with your attention you're like, what? Hmm? <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you guys heard, but like I've had like 10 fire trucks go past my house. But like, I don't know. It's been ridiculous. Like I took a short break and went and used the restroom. Lex but... in Eusta non es Lex? Bunny made up words. Although they have a certain righteous ring to them. Uh, that sounds almost, um, like Latin. Ew, cigars are gross. Of all the places in the world, the flavor country seems least appealing to me. I mean, cigars, like any other tobacco, are an acquired taste. Personally, I happen to like cigars, depending on the cigar. Some are absolutely Disgusting. I had one that tasted like chocolate once. Literally tasted like chocolate. It was Looks amazing. Expensive. Not condoning tobacco use, but I'm an adult. I do what I want. It's a decorative plaque of some sort, or an award for wood chopping. I don't really know. Looks like it has Japanese writing on it. I've always loved this painting. It looks familiar in a way. I feel like I've been there before. Huh. Yeah. How come you're not in it? I really love Ted's quippy remarks. Only for looking, not for touching, according to my mom. That's something that I hate. Just people having just vases, just empty fucking vases in their house. It annoys me. It's like having plates that you don't use. Like, if you have them, use them. My grandpa's books. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. Yeah, we already did. It's like, seriously, like, you could get, like, fake flowers or something and put them in the vase, and then it actually looks like it's serving a purpose. And, like, fake flowers aren't really that expensive. Maybe they might look a little tacky, but, I mean, at least it serves a purpose then. But then just like, oh, look, I have this vase that does nothing. So many places to visit. If I had a lot of money, I would spin this and travel to where my finger lands. Hopefully not in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, I did that when I was a kid. I'd always be like, you know, I've actually had globes and like, you know, wanted to go places, but never had the money for it, so never traveled. Would like to travel, just don't have the money for it. Let's take this bad boy for a spin. That is the slowest spin I've ever seen. It looks pretty. The sand, I bet, came from somewhere far away. That dim-witted boy sells these down at the local market. So the sand probably came from... Nope, somewhere far away. Maybe some desert. Sure, the desert. <laughs> oh, that's great. A book titled, It's a Wonderful Lie. The Judicial System and How to Exploit It for Profit. So many stupid words. I hate boring books. That sounds like an extremely useful book. Just saying. <laughs> what do I get? Hey, a flashlight. But there are no batteries in Ah, but I have a battery. There's to be some in the house. We can ask Rusty if he'll give us one of his. I'll take the flashlight with me. I have a battery. Can I put it in the box? This won't work. It usually takes two or more of these. Ah. I can't just put that one. I'm going to ignore the hole in the wall for now. Yeah, there's nothing else in here that I have to interact with. I really love the the way they talk about everything. What the hell? What was that? I don't uh, know, Ted. Lights, tricks. What? Yeah, I guess. The fuck? I'm getting too old for this. Thing. This thing. Yeah, sounds right. Not really. What the fuck did I just see? What the fuck was that? Dude. Okay. Rust, we need a big favor. What's this about, Bear? Rusty, we need a battery for our flashlight. We thought you could help us out. Sure, I got batteries, but here's the problem, miss. 
I'll give you a battery. I gotta shut down for the rest of the night, and I have to keep an eye out. We could take some of that edge off, Rust. Why don't you rest your eyes for a bit and let me and Dahl here take over? You? <laughs> no offense, Bear. I respect you as much as anyone in Paper City, but this here is different. I don't think you could handle this red guy on your own. You should take care of Miss and Millie and leave the patrol to me. Are you saying I'm not qualified for watch duty? We have to wrap this thing up, fast. There's a bottle of carrot juice in my desk that's longing for my return. We can keep an eye out for anyone suspicious in the meantime. Besides, you know I'm more than qualified. That nasty business from a couple of years ago, with them robots going missing. I was the one that brought that whole shady affair down and you know it. Are you trying to play me, Bear? I know you had nothing to do with that. That thing went so high up, there's no chance in hell Snoop like you even got close to wrapping it up. You seem to have blown a fuse there, Rust. It was me who cracked that case, and I can prove it. I have the case file and the credentials, handed to me by the commissioner in my office somewhere. Okay, okay, settle down there, Bear. Let's make a deal. You show me the credentials, and I'll handle okay. the battery. It's not that I don't believe you. I just want to make sure you're not playing me as all. Well. Can't you give us just one battery, Rusty? You'll still have a couple of them left, right? Here's the thing, little miss. It's a closed circuit. She knows. She's just playing on your soft side, Rust. All right. So we gotta go get the case file. Ted and Amber move away. Oh my God, Ted! You're not supposed to read the brackets. A do-over. <laughs> Keep it rolling. We should get to my office, doll. There's an old file I have to find. What's this whole deal about, anyways? Why can't he just give us a battery? We can keep an eye out. Rust is having a hard time coping with what happened. He worked in that mill for over 20 years, and now suddenly he's got nothing to do. Let's just do this to humor him. Poor Rust. Okay, you're right. Let's find that file. I think by the time this is over, we're going to meet a lot of people in his position. This is really interesting. I really like this game. Yeah, like The exposition is really nice. And like the fourth wall breaks, they're they're really entertaining. Like this game, like it's very well done. Like this is I think one of the best point and clicks I've ever played. Like Gemini Rue was really good as far as like storytelling goes, but this has like an atmosphere not only of like just odd, but like with the art style and like the way that the exposition is done with the, everybody talking and everything, like it's just I really, really enjoy it. This is a great point and click. This is like be an old file here somewhere. Nasty business from a couple of years ago. The robot union hired me to look into several cases of robot kidnappings. I remember that CEO of Illuminarium, Skinner, used robot parts to manufacture headlights at low prices. Yep, I brought down that whole shady deal. Almost got shot in the process. Rust finds me unqualified for lookout duty. Probably thinks I'm a burnout. You're not a burnout, Ted. I mean, you were more driven before, but I understand you've had a lot on your mind lately. Anyways, I'm really glad you're with me on this one. Sure thing, doll. What am I going to say no to you? Thanks, Ted. Don't mention it, partner. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so we need to get into the cat. There. Is this it? Yep, that's the one. Let's head back to that hothead robot. Now we're gonna leave? Okay. Alright. Let's just head on back to, uh, to Rust. Even if this is like all just like her imagination and like little stories she cooked up, like this is really creative and it's really cool. And like honestly, I like it a lot. Having trouble finding your proof of confidence, Snoop? I'll find it. It's somewhere in my office. I know that much. Oh, oops, I forgot sure to grab thing. it. Take your time. There we go. There you go, buddy. Signed and authorized by Commissioner Locke himself. Anyways, we really need that battery now, Rust. Time's a factor here. So it was you. I'll be damned. That was a big deal for us robots, you know? I always held you in high regard, Bear. But you just earned my utmost admiration, let me tell you. You can have my battery. 
I can use a little shut eye, to be honest. Keep an eye out and keep little miss here safe. Oh, and check on Millie from time to time. Make sure she's all right. Thanks, Rust. We won't let you down. Thank you so much, Rusty. Get some sleep. We'll wake you up in the morning. Oh, I like Rusty. But that is all the time that we have for this episode. Thank you, Lords and Ladies, for watching. See you at the journey's end. Ta-ta. I'm <laughs> sorry.